hello everyone, it's Benny, and welcome back to the Ultimate Guide to Redstone. In this video, we will be starting level 3. What that means is, by this point, you should have completely mastered level 1. You should already be the master of the basics of Redstone. That shouldn't be an issue for you anymore. As far as level 2, Logic Gates, goes, you don't need to necessarily be the master of all 18 of them, but at the bare minimum, the absolute minimum you need to know to understand the, the level 3, you need to be good with the NOT gate, the OR gate, and the AND gate. If you're good with those, you should be fine to move on to this level. So, that leaves the question, what are we going to be doing level 3? Well, level 3 is going to be all about circuits. And I know, that's a really big and broad topic. But we're just going to be talking all about different redstone devices that you can make using logic gates, also known as redstone circuits. And since this is such a big and broad topic, I'm not going to go into any specific circuits, because that would take the rest of my life to finish. I'm going to go over just general redstone circuitry. Generally, what makes a good redstone circuit? Generally, how should I design my circuits in different situations? And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to take five of the most common redstone circuits that you see. These are redstone circuits that are so common, they're almost used like logic gates. You'll see them absolutely everywhere. They're really big, really common, and therefore pretty useful to know. I'm going to be showing you those gates, just like I showed you logic gates. Excuse me, not showing you those gates. I'm going to be showing you those circuits, just like I showed logic gates. I'm going to show you inputs and outputs and how all those relate, just to get the concept of what the circuit's supposed to be doing across. But unlike the logic gate section, I'm then going to go through and show you how to build them, and how to design them, and what makes a good design, and how one thing can make it an outstanding design in one case, and an absolutely horrible design in another case. And that's what we're going to talk about in level 3. So, with that all out of the way, let's go ahead and get started. So, the first circuit I'm going to teach you is something called a latch. Now, there's two things that qualify a circuit as being a latch. First off, it has two states. So, for example, one state might be no power, the other state might be full power. If I had a screen, one state might be the screen has a smiley face, another state might be the screen has a frowny face. If I had, I don't know, some giant combination of wheat farms for some reason, one state might be it's harvesting one wheat farm, then the other state might be it's harvesting the other wheat farm. Something like that. So you might say, okay, right here, I have a latch, right? Well, no, not quite. Because the other qualifying state of a latch is it has to be able to hold that state independent of its inputs. So, oh, in other words, it has to be able to remember what state it's in, essentially. That's, that was a little bit of a technical way of saying it, but that's all it means. It means it has to have some way of remembering what state it's in. And that's what qualifies a latch. So just a lever and a wire, not quite a latch. So, believe it or not, these types of circuits come up absolutely everywhere. And to start, I'm going to show you one of the most basic and most useful latches. It's something called the SR latch. One moment. So, this is an SR latch. It has two inputs, set and reset. That's why it's called the SR latch, as you can see right here. Set S for set, and R for reset. SR latch. Now, there, one thing I should mention right off the bat is even though it's called an SR latch, you can reverse those letters and it's still accurate. So you can also call this an RS latch, and that's still accurate. The letters can be used either way. Traditionally, what is done, though, is you use SR and when referring to a generic SR latch, and you use RS when referring to a specific design of an SR latch. So for example, you might say RS NOR latch to refer to an SR latch made with NOR gates. You've probably heard that at some point before, if you know anything about Redstone. But anyways, sorry, I just destroyed my mic. But anyways, let's talk about the SR latch. Like in the example, the SR latch has two states, as you can see from the output right here. One state is off, and the other state is on. Now, the way these levers work is S sets it to 1. So if I hit this lever, 
then now the state is 1, no matter what the input is. And no matter how much I flip this lever, the state is going to be set at 1, because this is a set lever. When I send power through this wire, it sets the latch to 1. Reset does exactly the opposite. It sets the latch to 0, the 0 state. So that's all an SR latch does. It, one input will set it to one state, the other input sets it to the other state. One input sets it to one, and it will hold the one. The other, the other lever sets it to zero, and holds zero. So that's an SR latch. One neat thing about latches, though, is you usually can get both the output and the inverse of the output, like this. So if I wanted to, I could make an SR latch that's like this, and now I have both the output and the inverse of the output all in one. So that's just one neat little tidbit of an SR latch. So that's the SR latch. Now I'm going to show you a basic design, and then I'm going to show you how it, you can use it. So one moment. So since we're not talking too much about circuit design just yet, all I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the design. And later we can go back and talk about why one design or the other would be a good design or not, based on what we learn about circuit design later on. So, there's two big ways of making an SR latch. It requires a universal logic gate, either NAND or NOR, because that's the two universal logic gates that we know of. So, to start off with, I'm going to do NAND. So, I'm going to build a NAND gate. And to make a latch, you need two of these. So I'm going to move over a bit, make another NAND gate, and there. And to make this into a latch, all you have to do is you have to plug the output of one into both inputs of the other. And just do that for both of them. So, like this, for example. And there. Now, after I've done that, I now have my two inputs. And I also have my two outputs. So this is the set, and this is a reset. This is the output, and that's the inverted output. So if I hit set, then you'll notice that wire is set to 1. And if I hit reset, that changes it back to 0. Now, NAND's a little bit harder to understand exactly the logic that's going into it, so I'm not going to explain this particular design just yet, but this is one design, and uh, later on we're going to go back and talk about the advantages of the RS NAND design. I just started with it because most people just know the RS NOR design. So, for the NOR design, you start with a NOR gate. You start with a NOR gate right here. There's my NOR gate. Take another NOR gate. There's my other NOR gate. Plug the output of one and the input of the other. It's magic. We have an RS NOR latch. And there. So here's set. Here's reset. And yeah. So there. This is the basic. These are two basic designs for latches. Or SR latches at the very least. So let's talk about the logic that's really going into this, because clearly it's holding the state somehow, but how is it doing that? That's the question. So, the logic that goes into this is a little bit tricky. So, if you don't get it, or if you don't want to get it, that's perfectly fine and understandable. But for those of you who are curious, since it is kind of nice to know why the circuit's doing what it's doing, here's how it works. First off, I have my output wire right here. Now, if I want this to be held on, at some point, then I'll need something to power this. That's what this torch is doing. This torch will power it. Now, by default, I want this torch to be off, so that's why I have this torch. This torch keeps it on. And this sort of creates a an interesting chain effect, because if I send power for the output wire, what that's going to do is going to turn off this torch right here, and <coughs> what that does, that now activates this torch which means output now has power independent of my lever. So I can turn this off, and now it stays powered. And now you might be wondering, well, why doesn't it go back? Simple. Because the only thing that was powering this wire was this torch. 
and now this torch is turned off. So since this wire isn't receiving power, the torch never turns off. So yeah, logic, a little bit tricky, but that's essentially what it's doing. And hitting the inputs is like so that it flips, that's just called flipping the latch. That, that's what changing the state is called. And yeah, there you go. So, that's the SR latch, the most basic form of latch. Now let's talk about how it can be used. So, here's the first example. One of the big things that I use SR latches for in survival is intruder detection. So, right here I have an SR latch, as you can see, and I have that going into a torch. So, what I have right here is a pressure plate in front of my door. Now, this isn't uncommon to have pressure plates in front of your door just to open the door for you, but mine is actually rigged up to this SR latch. This means if anyone ever goes over the pressure plate, what that'll do is that'll trigger my intruder detector. And what that means is that all of a sudden I have this redstone torch to turn on, and I can have this do whatever. So, that's one big way I use SR latches all the time in survival. That way, no one can ever mess with my stuff. And the cool thing about doing it this way, rather than doing it with, say, an AND gate or something, after they leave, this thing stays on. So, first off, that means it's not dependent. They don't have to stand on the pressure plate. They, they just have to go through. And secondly, it means that I, I always have a way of knowing if someone was there, no matter how much time has passed since they triggered it. So, yeah, that's one really big way I use SR latches all the time. So yeah, there's your first example. Another really common use of SR latches is in combo locks. So for example, I have all these buttons and a reset button. If I try pressing the buttons out of order, it doesn't open the door. So now I hit reset. Now I sort of reset. I hit the buttons out of order again. Still doesn't work. Not only if I hit the buttons in the order of my combination, which I've incredibly creatively made one, two, three, and four, only then does it open the door. The way this is done is literally with just a basic chain of SR latches. And again, I'm using RS NOR instead of because, I don't know, I like RS NOR better since they're smaller, and they're more useful in most cases. There are a couple of cases where especially in advanced circuitry where RS NAND is incredibly useful. And yeah, so this is all the logic. All the buttons were simply powering these wires right here. And yeah, so just to give you another demonstration, this time seeing the redstone, if I try flipping this, it doesn't actually flip the latch. The reason is I'm sending power for a repeater from the uh, latch from the previous digit into this one. So only if this latch is flipped can I flip this latch. If I try flipping a latch out of order, it doesn't let me because the latch before it is still sending power into it. If you want a more creative combination than one, two, three, four, all you'd have to do is just plug these in differently than in a straight line like this. But, and also you might want to put your reset lever so it's not also powering the input, that helps. But yeah, that's all the logic that goes into it. And since this isn't a combination lock tutorial, and there's already a million of combination lock tutorials that do exactly this out there, I'm not going to go any deeper into it than that, but this is a very common use of SR latches. And yeah. And while I'm at it, I'm just going to show you one more design to oh, the SR latch. Now this is where something really special happens, because up to this point, Everything I've shown you that isn't redstone specific can be directly translated into electronic circuitry, say for electrophysics. So this right here is something that does not work in actual electronics. This is completely Minecraft and redstone specific. So just bear that in mind when I show you this. So this is a design for an SR latch that doesn't rely on any logic gates. It goes like this. The idea here is that if you send power into here, the repeater is going to send power into itself and just essentially create an infinite circuit like this. And to reset it, 
what you use is you use a piston. Well, if your piston breaks this line right here, then that will set it back to zero. So this will set it to one, and this will set it to zero. The reason it sets it to zero is since the repeater is trying to power itself. If I put the block in the way, then the repeater no longer can power itself anymore, because this redstone is cut off from this redstone. And this is a mi very Minecraft-specific design for an SR latch. But, yeah. So there you go. Just another design. So I thought you might enjoy that. And unfortunately, that's all the time I really have. I've shown you the SR latch. And the reason I spent so much time focusing on this is it's the really big latch. Especially RS NOR. If you can master RS NOR, you've got latches down for the most part. There's a few more that are useful in other scenarios, and in fact in the next video I'm going to talk about some of the issues with the basic SR latch and why it's not ideal in several situations. In fact, more situations than you might initially expect. So yeah, that's what I'm going to do, and thank you, and see